you know, the music moves the body in a kinetic way always. <laughs> When the rhythm is right, when the flow of the shaker works, then the, the spirits are riding into the space on that stream. Nick Berch is a legendary musician and is something of a musical superhero to my bandmates and me. His bands, workshops, and composition have not only changed the way many of us see music, but his holistic approach to the craft of performance has transformed the way many of us live our lives as a whole. Nick's teaching has had a particularly profound effect on my pal, Tim Doherty. Tim has been studying with Nick for a few years, and in that time, he's evolved into a Charizard. Nick came to Boston to teach a musical workshop during a recent US tour and he and Tim got together to film an extensive interview about Nick's unique musical offerings. It's a huge honor to be able to share this with you here. I think the performance is the essential thing for the music, you know, when we hear it and do not see it as a concept or um, an abstract form on the paper or as an idea. You have rhythm, um, melody, harmony and several in between levels of this analysis. But what I found very valuable and interesting to really talk about music and to share music and to communicate about music was to check out how is it performed? How does the idea of a composition come to life and how is this life influenced by a, a band, a group of people or a, a single player also. So that brought me to these kind of views on the performance in terms of phrasing. So it's very important how something is played we cannot write that totally into a, 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 a score. It's like when the language is written. So in the head of the reader or the person who reads it loud, it sounds different depending on the person who read, reads that. And the phrasing, the way something is played, picked up or brought to reality from a score or even in an improvisation, that's an interesting thing and how this is done together, like group does it how they phrase, how they find in the musical language their dialect or even their slang, so that it gets really characteristic, interesting, you know, even ironic, uh, weird, special. We know all these band sounds, right? Because the, the group is phrasing in a certain way. And also in workshops when we talk about music, how you can realize it, it's a lot about phrasing, the relation of the subdivision to the bigger breathing, to the bigger pulse, how you organize that. So that's the phrasing, the first point. Then the second point is the dynamics, how a group organizes in, in, a, in smaller parts, but also over the whole piece, the, the, the dynamics, like where they go up, where they go down. So usually in classical scores, we have a lot of dynamic indication, even in modern scores, really a lot sometimes, or quite extreme kind of dynamics to really show what's in there and how it should be played. But on the other hand, dynamics is a question of how a gr group or a person expresses the music in a certain space, in a certain context. And I think that the range of dynamics shows also the quality of a musician, of a, of a group, of people who are creating, uh, bringing music to life, right? So when you hear a band playing very often, you can also check out the way they use dynamics from the smallest way of like creating a sound until the high pressure and power um, that a band can, you know, lands.
And then the third point, the sound, is about how they mix the, the, the different reson resonances. On one hand, as a band, but also what the band does in the space they're playing with the PA or acoustically, however. So the blendings, the, the way how uh, an instrument is maybe shadowing another one, uh, if instruments are doubled or, trip, or in a triple way organized so that you have these kind of special blends of sounds that we find so often also in chamber music that is really developed um, in the composition but also from the perform performing group. So this idea of, of creating resonances where you finally as a listener don't know anymore, oh that's the individual instrument but it's a sound. And we're talking also often um, about bands that they have a characteristic sound. Yeah. So they, they sound in a certain way. Uh, how the bass drum is combined with the bass uh, sound, you know, the frequencies, but also, for example, in our case, how a bass clarinet and uh, a prepared piano, how they blend, how they come together. Also the way the player hits the instrument or how a drummer chooses like right or the snare sound. For example, Casper uh, Rost in our band, he has a, a huge collection of snares and he, depending on the program, on the place where we play, on the band where he plays in, he chooses different snares, always tuning that, uh, the, the whole drums and stuff like this. So that's all about Finally, what you hear, really, what touches you in the ear. And the fourth point is the dramaturgy. This means how do we get from A to B, but also from A to Z. So, of course, you write that when you create a score, you write that usually in the composition, you have an idea of of the journey you're presenting or the material or the coherence of the material. But how finally a musician or a band or an orchestra with a conductor creates that flow of music. You know, as an example with my um, uh, late piano teacher, uh, Mrs. Erna Ronka. So she always told me when I was playing something, let's say Beethoven sonata or something, that often she said, it's right how you play it, but you know, music always goes somewhere. So you need to bring in more the spin and the direction. Means when we play a piece, we have to really work on that direction. That has to do with a lot of things. How like in language, how you formulate uh, a, a phrase, how you bring it together in phrasing, in dynamics, in sound, but also in the direction you give it, in the spin, the moments of spin you have in musical material. Very often we have a crescendo to a certain point that is linear. Right, so it goes up like this. So as a listener you feel it very directly happening. But you know at a certain point how it will work. So in a way, you know, uh, it is um, um, foreseen where it goes. But when you do it more like exponential, then you kind of, you know, pull in the listener much more um, in a very sensual way. And the dramaturgy goes more in like, a very kinetic way. Great players uh, or composers, for example, like Miles Davis um, with his groups or um, uh, composers who wrote long pieces of like over an hour or 45 minutes, they were really good in taking care about this big moment that you start the concert and you know already, you have an intuitive feeling where it has to go to, that you, you do not end in between somewhere and lose energy, right? You have to have a consciousness where it finally goes. <laughs>